Welcome to Funk You Up, the podcast that gives you the best of functional medicine, nutrition, and wellness in eight minutes or less. Welcome to the Funk You Up podcast. This is Michelle Miller, clinical nutritionist. And Samantha Winicky, functional medicine health coach. Take it away, Samantha. What are we talking about today? Today, we're talking about iron. One of my favorite minerals to talk about. Yeah, it's an important one, right? It really is. So I'm going to give you a brief description of why it's so important. So what it does is it's an important component of hemoglobin. So it carries oxygen from your lungs and transports it throughout your body. We need hemoglobin to help carry oxygen to our body. That's thinking everywhere, right? So every muscle from your toes to your nose, getting oxygen to your brain. I mean, your whole system, this can't be understated how essential this process really is. So if you have low iron, that's one of the reasons your whole system can be thrown out of whack, right? You think about symptoms of, common symptoms of iron deficiency, right? Like you get fatigue for sure. Oh my gosh, huge brain fog. Hair loss. Hair loss, Mm -hmm. hair thinning. Mm -hmm. Um, I would even say, you know, dry skin could be an issue. I mean, iron's everywhere. Yeah, and sometimes heart palpitations. Temperature Mm -hmm. can affect so much. Yeah. So it's one of the first things that we take a look at if we're evaluating functional blood labs. Because we need to make sure, are you getting it into the cells? Are you storing it properly? What's your hemoglobin level? Making sure this is all running top notch. Yeah, and you can get iron from food sources and we can work from a nutrient level as far as are you having enough Sometimes it comes in the form of red meat. Um, a lot of times, uh, like organ meats are really good for iron, and I know that sounds kind of crazy for people. No one feels like eating chicken liver, but don't knock it till you try it. It's one of my favorites. It's a little bit more old school, but you're absolutely right. I mean, if we're talking about some of the most nutrient-dense foods rich in iron, that's what it's going to be. Yeah. And spinach is a good one, lentils. I mean, there's a lot of ways we can get it through food. Yeah, we'll often first think about the hemi iron that's going to be found in your animal products. That's the easiest to absorb, less conversions in the body to be able to get that kind of iron in the body. But also, I mean, non-hemi stores, that's going to be your your vegetable sources, your green vegetables, leafy greens, like Samantha said, for spinach. Mm Mm-hmm. And I think, too, getting a combination of those foods in your diet is probably best, but there are supplement options as well. So supplement iron is a little bit controversial because it's a difficult supplement to take. We'll often find we get some complaints of people taking iron supplements, whether it's constipation or it's a little bit harder on their stomach, they get a stomach ache. And there's also concerns about having iron levels too high in the body. Iron, because it's a it's a metal, I mean, it can oxidize and create stress in your body. So it isn't a really important nutrient to be tested, kind of get those levels assessed um, either on a yearly basis or a quarterly basis if you've had a history of low iron or high iron in the past. Yeah, and is that another one of those, I know we've talked before about the important supplements to make sure that you are getting from high quality sources and it's um, the right form of the vitamin. Is that one of those that you really have to pay attention to? Yeah, great point. I mean, I think there are some, if you take an iron supplement or a multivitamin that has iron in it and it hurts your stomach and you're already taking that when you're eating, Mm. you should look at the form of the vitamin, the form of the iron that's in that that supplement because you might do better with a different form, a little bit easier absorbed. I really enjoy a lot of the whole food based supplements because I think just naturally that's an easier way to absorb it. I know in the office we sometimes will recommend Floridex. That's a good liquid right. version as well. Mm-hmm. Some herbs that are mixed into that too. So who are the individuals that might be a little bit more at risk for low iron? I mean, I think of women a lot, right? Menstruating women. Definitely. That seems like the obvious choice. And on top of that, maybe a female who doesn't consume animal protein. Right. Yeah. That's a huge aspect. Um, I would especially say if anyone has a history of fibroids, it's going to be increasing the blood loss each month. It's difficult for you to get enough iron through your diet, especially with the stress our GI systems are often in, let alone 
replete that blood store month after month just okay. through diet alone. So that is where it is important to test and maybe consider supplementation too. That makes sense. Do you have, I know we talked in another episode about functional lab ranges. Do you have a specific lab range you like to see iron? That's a great question. I like to see, it's different for men and women, uh, hemoglobin specifically. Mm -hmm. Hemoglobin will tend to be a little bit higher in men, a little bit lower in women. But for women, I like to make sure it's not below 12.5, ideally closer to 13 or 13.5. Ferritin for me is the big marker to be looking at on blood work because that's measuring your iron storage. So you get a good sense of like the backup reserves when you're looking at ferritin. And it's a little bit more accurate in terms of testing one day versus another. So for females, I mean, really 60 and higher is what you want to aim for. Men, it's going to be a little bit easier to keep those ranges on the higher side, especially if you're a woman who's trying to get pregnant. You really want to make sure your, your ferritin is as close to 60 or, or you know, closer to 100 if you, if you can. That would be amazing. But that's a really important mineral especially going into pregnancy that you're going to need a little bit more of too great point thanks for that i think it's important so our listeners can kind of go back to this episode once they get their blood work done or something like that and reference yeah absolutely yeah now i will say too there's a big issue with absorption of iron and a lot of times that can come from poor digestive state eating under stress Um, but i think it's also important to consider if you have a history of um or potential for low hydrochloric acid or low Mm -hmm. enzyme function? What are some things people could do to help that? Right, of course, because if your body, if your gut can't physically break down, if you're, you could be eating those nutrients, but your body can't break it down. So yeah, we see sometimes, you can see through the blood work or through some of our stool testing that some people don't have the proper acids to break down the meat. So we do, you know, there, there are some different things you can do, right? And one of those would be to kind of increase um, through something like apple cider vinegar 20 minutes before the meal, if you mix that with some water, or there are different digestive enzymes with HCL kind of supplements we can use. Yeah, I love digestive enzymes, pancreatic enzymes. I do not consume a food without them. Neither do I. Yeah, I Especially if you're eating out. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, that's a huge one. I know anytime Samantha and I have needed to travel, that's one we're always keeping in our carry-on. There's yeah. no chance of losing track of our digestive You'll enzymes. You'll see me at a table with my friends just passing around my digestive enzymes at the table. <laughs> that's amazing. Now, I will say, too, iron can help us and kind of give us some hints of other things going on in the body. So one other thing to consider, if you're seeing chronically low levels of iron when you're getting your blood work tested, and let's say you don't have a menstrual cycle, or maybe you're a male and you're not having a a period at all, and you're getting dietary intake, you're using supplements, but you're just not seeing that iron level come up on the blood work, you're not seeing the ferritin go up, you're not seeing hemoglobin go up. One thing we often ask our patients to consider is getting some diagnostic stool analysis done to test and rule out parasites. It's interesting because iron can actually be a fuel source for this type of microbe or or parasite or worm. And your body, because it knows that is a fuel source for that type of of bug or, or parasite, it will actually store away and hide that iron so that you can't continue to feed it. So your body could actually be helping you in that process because you don't want those guys to to flourish at all. Um, But another good thing to rule out if you've had a history of this over time. And then finally, I think the biggest thing is you always want to make sure if this is a chronic issue, you know, there's no blood in the stool. There's, Mm -hmm. you know, working with a doctor to make sure there's no issues or, or ruling out internal bleeding, any kind of serious medical conditions like that. It's always a good, good idea to check with your doctor. All great points. And I think we could talk forever about this. Such an important mineral. Such an important mineral. If you guys do have more questions that come up, please reach out to us. You can pop on Instagram, we're at Physiologic NYC. You can email us at funkyouup at Physiologic NYC. But we hope to hear from you soon and have a wonderful day. Keep the feedback coming. We love you guys. Funk it up. You've been listening to Funk You Up. Be sure to like, review, and subscribe for more daily tips on living well.